Dude, check out this horse I found. Oh, sounds like a little baby horse. Yeah. A seahorse. That's just Brayden's baby fingers. Arthritic. His arthritic baby fingers cracking. <laughs> <laughs> Mystery Door! They're all your friends, they're solving crimes, they're traveling in a party. The right songs, we don't have time, so come on, let's get started. Bardic Mystery Tour is a 5th edition D&D actual play about a rock and roll band that solves mysteries while they're out on tour. I'm Ed, and I'll be your DM. I'm Emily, and I'm playing Flo Calhoun. Flo is a bard. She is the lead singer of Antler Mayhem, a rock band that you hopefully know about a little bit. She usually tries to help people, and that's everything. Hi, my name is Brayden. I'm playing Sammy Stoneslinger. Sammy Stoneslinger is the best bard of the bunch. He's a gnomish drummer for the band Antler Mayhem, and Sammy's a no-nonsense kind of guy, unless he's doing the nonsense, in which case... He's a lot of nonsense kind of guy. Hi, I'm Grundledore. And I'm using social distancing as a good excuse uh, for simply not liking most people. Last time on Bardic Mystery Tour, the gang infiltrated the grounds of Yasagaro Castle. They killed a vampire spawn, and then they came face to face with Lady Vaya who introduced them to a mysterious woman whose identity is unknown, yet she seems to know Antler Mayhem. We join them as they learn her identity. This is Bardic Mystery Tour. She says maybe this will spark your memory, and she opens her mouth and lightning fires out of her mouth. Roll some initiative. Holy shit, this is biblical. Oh, this is the blue dragon. Oh, remember when we were talking about dragons being in town? Remember when I said we killed it? It got away, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. It totally did. Oh, you did lie about that, didn't you? Yeah. You lied so well, I forgot that we didn't kill that thing. Yeah. 16. Eight. One. What was her name? Sindal. Sindral. Celine. Celine. All right. Everyone roll a reflex save. Oh. Oh yeah. Hey yo. What's a reflex save? Baby, um, baby, dexterity? Fine. Fine. baby, baby, baby. Roll a dexterity save. Baby, baby. I got a fifteen. Twenty six. Got a fifteen. <laughs> Do I get to add my proficiency to this? Only if you're proficient in reflex saves. <sighs> yes, you do. Three. Do I? Look on your sheet where it says dexterity. So first off, it's the dexterity save. There is no dex. Oh, that. Okay, I got it. I rolled an eight. I'm sticking to that. All right. Sammy Stoneslinger and Grundledor take 40. Holy eight shit. damage. Flo, you take half of that. 24. 48? That doesn't even matter to me. Via you. Oh, God. You would have had an ally. What are you doing here? Um, I was ready to flip. Dark falls unconscious. Oh, no. But the lightning bolt missed uh, Varaxian and Gus Gex. Is it because they were both floating and so like it had it went through the floor? They just weren't in that line. They were over there and you guys were this way. I laugh it off. All right. Lady Vaya cackles and turns around and walks through the burgundy and gold door. Slams it shut. Sammy. How much life do you have left, Sammy? Twelve. But don't just. I'm playing it like I'm tough. You are tough. <laughs> yeah. You're a strong dude. Also, everyone roll a wisdom save. Boom! I rolled a natural 20, so that's a 19. 10. Natural 20 plus 2, 22. All right, Flo, you are frightened. That's not wrong. Okay, but you have the condition of frightened. Flo feels the same as normal. A frightened creature has disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls while the source of its fear is within line of sight. The creature can't willingly move closer to the source of its fear. That's all. To be clear, I'm afraid of Celine, right? Yes. Okay. I think it's time to really F her up. So we know that she's this blue dragon. Do we know that they're susceptible to any kind of thing? I don't know. I got a four. I roll 
rolled a nine. You got a 21 history check. You know they are immune to lightning damage. I'm going to cast Crusader's Mantle. Yeah, we got to attack her. Is that her. the one where we have to hit her a bunch with regular things, yeah. not spells? Attack her with mundane things. How long does that last? Is it like 10 minutes? I'm looking it up right now. You um, calling my sword mundane? It la- yeah, it lasts for a minute. Even my blood maul? And I guess it only cast as a third level spell because there's no benefit to casting it higher. And it's anybody who's within 30 feet of me. So how far away is she from me? She's 30 feet away. She's like up the stairs. You think stairs are difficult terrain? Like, running upstairs is, like, harder than running flat. That makes sense to me. Um, And I'm going to move up the stairs a little bit, and so that we're not in a line anymore. Okay. And that's my turn. It's my turn? Yeah, I rolled, yes. like, a two. Okay, well, I'm terrified of her, so I'm not going anywhere near her. In fact, I think I'm going to back up towards the door a couple feet, you know? Just don't get too far away from me. Yeah. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Can I also yell as a free action? Don't use lightning on her. She's a blue dragon. Okay. I'm going to back up a couple steps away from her because she's super terrifying. And I'm going to cast Mass Cure Wounds as a fifth level spell on all of my friends in this room. So that's 3d8 plus my spellcasting ability modifier. They've got bumps, they're bruised, they're black and blue. I've got good news, I choose to heal you. That's 18 hit points to all my friends. Could have done better. Definitely rolled a one in there. All right, at the end of your turn, roll another wisdom save against that fear. 13. Well, still afraid. You get another one every turn at the end of your turn. Until you beat it. Or die. Grondoldor. I'm going to polymorph into giant ape, I suppose. Ah. Uh. <laughs> I'm thinking that I'm going to do a perception check and look around to see if are there like any rocks around 14 because apes have that rock skill. But I assume you have to have a rock. Sure. Unless we're talking about being turned into an ape that already has a rock. No. So I want to look around to see if there's any like debris in the room. Now there's a hole in the ceiling, right? The, yeah, there's a little bit of the ceiling debris, but there's not like, uh, the room's still pretty clean. No bricks, no loose rocks, no stones. Nah, not really. Nothing I can pick up and throw. Okay then, T-Rex it is. As I bend you to my will, you feel the animal release. As I change your heart into that of a beast. I'm gonna turn into a motherfucking T-Rex. You feel the weight of your new body crushing the floor below you. It seems very fragile, but it holds for now. Ah, uh, this is what it feels like to be Ant-Man. All right. Celine runs up, puts one foot up on the banister, and leaps over top of the room, spreads her arms out into a swan dive, and then turns into a huge blue dragon. Last time you met Celine, she was like, 15 to 20 feet in length, but now she's like 30 feet in length. Not that much time could have passed. She must have gone to uh, that chamber that Goku went to to train on King Kai's. No, not on King Kai's place. On Kami's floating palace. Yeah, do you think that she talked to that sphinx like she said she did? Yeah. Then she falls like the 15 feet or whatever from the balcony down to the floor and lands on the ground. The floor shatters underneath her, and everyone, well, Celine, Sammy, Grondador, and Flo all begin to tumble down into this large cavern beneath the manor. 
my little arms scrape at the walls. This is like watching the end of Land Before Time here. And what falls 20 feet-ish into a large underground cavern that no one knew was there. Roll a reflex save. What? How do you do that? A dexterity save? All right, now no one gets a save. Everyone takes falling damage equal to... (laughs) So we don't get a save? Five damage. You don't know the words? Yep, suck it. This edition's been out for like five years. I don't care. How much damage? Five. This cavern reeks of the Bahir. Was this the same cavern as the other one? No. Okay. Thank goodness we got out of that place. Wait, wait, no. If it's another one, that means it's a different Bahir. No, but Bahirs hate dragons. I said it reeks of that Bahir. Oh. Dead. Oh, the dead one. Oh, is the dragon mad because we have Bahir skin jumpsuits? Oh, we can my. take these off, I say. Oh, cowering my God. Against the wall. Well, no, but wouldn't that when it's, we're like, yo, we killed the thing you hate. We're like your friends. You hear? Well, are we seeing this? Maybe we, they were in love meta. and we killed her friend. You know? I think Ed's trying to attack me, but we keep talking. I think we just like slowed down time and communicated with our minds. She swings a claw at Sammy Stoneslinger. 26. They, yeah, barely hits. Can I cutting words the damage? Yeah. Cutting words, I say, terrified in the side of the room. With my tongue sharp as a dart, I'm sure you'll fall apart. I'll use my wit to cut you down and watch you hit the ground. You know, is this like a boss battle in a game? Are we still falling? Twelve. I should have done that. Cutting words. My words could horrify you. My words will bring on strife. When you said yourself against me, my words will cut like a knife. Really is a waste, because she got a critical. Even with the cutting words, it's a 26. That's in fact higher than my armor class. She does... 19 damage. All right, I'm unconscious, which means my Crusader's mantle is gone. Although I probably would have failed a concentration check after the first hit or the falling damage or something. And then she cackles loudly and turns to flow and chops at her with her mouth. No. 27. Yeah, that hits. 16 damage plus 7 lightning damage. I'm at 5 hit points. All right, well, it's your turn. I, how close am I to this terrifying beast? We gotta go like Transformers on this. It's time to go beast mode. She's huge, so you're next to her. I'm going to cast Mass Cure Wounds on Sammy, I guess Grundledore, although I think he's fine because he's a T-Rex, and myself as a level five spell. What about your boy Varaxian? Varaxian's not down. He didn't fall in the hole. Oh, what about Dirk? He He also didn't fall in the hole. They've got bumps, they're bruised, they're black and blue. I've got good news, I choose to heal you. 19 hit points to Sammy and myself and if Grendeldor needs it. And then um, I guess I can't really move because then I'm taking an advantage hit from her, right? What is that called? Opportunity attack. Yeah. But I like have to move away from her, don't I? If I'm afraid? No, you just can't move toward her. Okay. Well, I just stand there terrified and shaking. All right. Do you want to roll your will save again? My wisdom wisdom save save? again? Yeah. 15. All right. You are no longer afraid of her. (sighs) I mean. I mean, I'm afraid of her, but I'm not like magically afraid of her anymore. I'm just like normal, regular scared in my boots. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's fine, I guess. Sammy. All right, I'm going to cast Cure Wounds on myself as a fifth level spell. I know I'm coming over, baby. I know that you hurt me, baby. You'll make it through, baby. I'll get your wounds, baby. 36 hit points. That's a really good. Good job. She swings her tail at Sammy. 22 armor class. That hits me. 
16 damage. Out. Grundledor. Well, now that I'm a beast, there's not a whole lot I can do. Except attack. First, I'm going to whip the T-Rex with my tail. Whip the T-Rex? <laughs> I'm punishing myself, you see. So, 27. That's 3d8. 15 damage. Okay. And then I bite. Gnash. With my big fangs. That's a 25. To hit. 22. Does 40, 12 damage? Yeah. Wow. No, plus 7. Piercing. Uh, if the target is a medium or smaller creature, it is grappled. But this dragon that is, is not. not this is This is big. Okay. That's it. She screeches and whips you with her tail. 26. Ow. That's not bad. 10 damage. Oh, that's not bad. All right. I'm, I'm getting, like, nervous. On her turn, she turns to this Tyrannosaurus Rex and screams, You idiot, you're such a moron. Oh, it's the manticore. She swings at you with her claw. Cutting 17. words. Mm-hmm. With my tongue, sharp as a dart, I'm sure you'll fall apart. I'll use my wit to cut you down and watch you hit the ground. 16. Oh, 13. Oh, yeah, that's... Ooh, I'm easy to hit. All right. I tried. I'm big. How are you going to miss me? 14 damage. Barn. She swings with another claw. She almost can't miss you, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm huge. 11 damage. Then she bites at you. Uh, 29 armor class. She bites you for... What the... Those are bad rolls, man. 9 damage. And... 4 lightning. All right, Flo. Um, so I'm going to use my rapier and try and stab her. Okay. 27. Does that hit? That's a hit. It's eight damage. And then as a bonus action, I am going to cast Healing Word on myself as a level three spell. There are some words that I must tell. And as long as you can hear my spell, it'll help you to feel well, get better. Gives me 11 more points. All right. Then she swings her tail at you. At me? Yep. 27. That hits. She deals you 14 damage. Sammy Stoneslinger. The way we're positioned around her, is there anybody on the opposite side of her for me? Is that where Grungo is? Nah, you're like a triangle. I want to move around the perimeter of her so that I'm between Flo and Grungo. Is that a possibility? Yeah. Hopefully I can get past Flo. Okay. Does that work? Yeah. Okay. And then I'm going to cast Sonic Blast as a fourth level spell. Okay. So, um, she makes a save for half damage, and it is a dexterity saving throw against 17. Okay. I think that I can cutting words her saving throw, so I'm going to do that. Okay. My words could horrify you. My words will bring on strife. When you said yourself against me, my words will cut like a knife. Then it's going to do 68 force damage. 35 damage. Oh, Sammy, you're laying it out. And then um, if she fails, then she takes all of it. But she's also pushed back 20 feet and knocked prone. And 20 feet? Yeah. Which there might be a wall there. But I'm hoping that that's enough space that the T-Rex can come in and be between us. Okay. She slides back and hits a wall. She went uh, probably 10 feet before hitting a wall. Cool. Which means you're out of range of her tail. And that's my whole turn. Sweet. Grundledor. Flo, did you want to go for a ride? I mean... I'm going to go jump on this dragon. No. I'm way better with my bow at 21 hit points. Thank I'm going to go ride a dragon. Go do it. I want to ride. Oh, sorry. Okay, so I go and I try to ride the dragon. I charge and leap and try to land on top of the dragon. That is laying prone. I charge and leap. 
So melee attacks against a prone target have advantage. Okay, I basically want to be on top of this dragon. Like ranged ah. attacks against a prone target have disadvantage. Ah, uh, well, the tail first is. Uh, I roll a twenty. You roll a twenty? Yeah. Well, not natural. Oh. Fifteen. Fifteen damage. Yes, and then my bite is twenty-seven. It's a hit. Thirty-eight. All right, she swings her tail at you. 16 armor class. You're just 13 right now, right? Yeah, no, yeah, I'm a, I'm a barn. I'm the broad side of a barn. Jeez. 10 damage. Then she full attacks Grundledor. Ugh. 16, that's a hit. That's 15 damage. 27. That's 14 damage. And then she bites you. 24. That's 17 damage. And seven lightning damage. 10, 15, 14, 17, 7. Oh my god. This might take a while, guys. That was 76 damage. In one round? Yeah. Well, no, 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 no. Plus the other, the previous, like, oh, okay. the nine and the four I hadn't subtracted from the previous one. Still Down T-Rex? to 20. Oh, yeah, barely. All right, Flo. I am going to shoot at her. What's your damage, did you say you're down to? What are your I'm down to like 25. Yeah, okay. Uh, how are you, Brayton? Uh, I'm at 39. Um, I'm going to shoot at the dragon. 29, does that hit? Yep. Uh, 11 damage. And I think that that's all I can do. All right, she swings her tail at Grundledore. 22 armor class. Woo, that's, that's a hit. Ooh. <laughs> oh, no. 21 damage. Ooh, Jesus, but it hurting on me. I'm down to four. Sammy Stoneslinger. I want to step up beside Grungo, and I'm going to do the same spell again. Psionic Blast as a fourth level spell again. Are you trying to angle it so you can get some push? Because if you step up beside him, you might be able to oh, yeah, is there laterally room? move. Yeah, the cavern's pretty big. Okay, yeah, I'll do that. Thirty-one points of damage. If she saves, does she not move? Oh, correct. She swings her tail at Sammy. No, why me? Twenty-four armor class. That's a hit. Seventeen damage. Okay. Grandodor. Okay. Uh, this is probably my last turn as a T-Rex. Going to attack again. First with my tail. I only rolled a 12. All right, that's a miss. And my, I rolled the same thing on my bite. Oh, my God. Womp, womp. Too bad you don't have that luck blade out. Or even just on your person. Oh, if I, I wouldn't have that luck blade out, I'd be so dead. She swings her tail at Grundledore. Maximum tail damage. 22 damage. Oh, I'm, I'm down to Grungo. All right. Your armor class improved. Does he take the overbleed? No, he doesn't. Okay. I have 29 hit points as Grongo. Well, she swings her claw at Grongo. Um, a 13 doesn't hit you, does it? But a 29 does. You take 11 damage from her second claw. And then she bites at you. 24 armor class. You take 17 damage. And 4 lightning damage. Uh, it takes me down to zero. And back to one. Relentless endurance kicked in. Oh, I hope that's the end of her attack. Can I get within 15 feet of her without being within 15 feet of them? No, they're standing next to her. Oh, uh, you know, she's huge. Actually, you have to be, what, 15 feet from Grundledor. But he is now a medium creature. Mm-hmm. And you pushed her all the way to one side of this cavern. I think you can. How many feet do I have to run up? 25 feet. I'm going to run 25 feet up. And I'm going to cast Thunder Wave as a fourth level spell. Thirty 
38 damage. She gets a save. It's a constitution saving throw. Against what? 14. Cutting words on her saving throw. My words could horrify you. My words will bring on strife. When you said yourself against me, my words will cut like a knife. I think that might be a waste. It's against a 14. Yes. I'm feeling this adrenaline rush. Ha ha! I made a face that makes me feel good. I feel like someone lit in my drink right now. I'm all so what happens? Uh, so she gets 38 thunder damage, and she's pushed 10 feet away from me. And then I run back as many feet are left for my movement. And then I cast as a bonus action. Hold on. I can't cast because it's bonus. It's already cast a spell. All right. Flow cast thunder wave. It shoves Celine's massive body slamming into the wall of the cavern. Her head bangs roughly against the side, smashing the rocks into bits, and her enormous body collapses onto the ground, unconscious. Oh. Skinner. I'm sorry. Skinner alive? She's just unconscious. You can uh, take your bonus action if you want. Here's the chance we get. While the enemy is knocked unconscious, we go savage on her. I cast my polymorph on all of us, and we just go multi-attack and just, like, gang stomp this That's thing That's a lot of spells for a coup de gras, man. Isn't she dead? Like, if we leave her, she'll just die? No. She's unconscious. She's unconscious. She's gonna wake back up. We either gotta, like, run no. away or well, finish guess. her off. Let's finish her off. You we said have... Skinner, though. You said Skinner. What if we start skinning her right now? She'll come She's too. not... <laughs> Will she? She's already knocked unconscious. Will she notice we take off her skin? What if we try to get in her first? Like quickly cut her in the stomach and while she's waking up, climb on in. Trojan dragon. The Trojan <laughs> dragon. Okay, and then I can't <laughs> you heal her more. from inside. <laughs> no, no, someone cut him. You guys need to cut her open. I'm going to go in. Or Sammy, you go in your little. Yeah. And yeah. I cast Wallymorph on you. Make me something bigger. And, I mean, like an elephant. Dude, this is alien. And then I'll the, fill out her insides, yeah, yes. and then I can walk out with a dragon just climb down suit. her mouth. <laughs> you guys have different ideas. Grandonor is suggesting you explode her, I think, from within. And you're expecting that you can walk around with a Celine suit on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you push your bones and stuff out. <laughs> yeah, all right. Let's get to the pushing her bones out um, first so we have just the skin. You know what I mean? I think we have to kill her first. All right. We're running out of time. We need to, like, cut off her head quick, run away, polymorph her into something small per a bottle. Uh, you can't polymorph something that's at zero hit points. While they're having conversations about this, I'm just going to run up with my gold iron rapier and just start stabbing in through her eye to try to get her brain. Perfect. I'll go help Flo do that. All right. Should we go savage on her? Yeah. Should we go, like, beast mode, like, turn you into... I guess this, this There's is no combat right now. I can just turn you into beasts and we can do it. It's unfortunate that we have blue Bahir leather suits. I can already. do it three more times. I think there's a chance we have to go upstairs and kill Lady Vaya now. And I think you might want those spells. No, he has to go combat. do something to something nine. We need to take a long rest after this. We need to run away and long rest. Regardless, um, do I have to roll for these stabs or just say I did? No, no, them? you just start. Jabbing the crap out of her eye. It starts bleeding eye pus out. It's like disgusting. You're just maiming her corpse. You get down to her brain. She's dead now? Oh, yeah, dude. All right. As long as I think she's dead, I'm done. You savage flow. Jeez. I want to call up to Varaxian. Hey, Varaxian, how's everything doing up there? Uh, I think that the range on telepathy is not long enough for that. We only fell 20 feet, you said. Yeah, I think the range on telepathy is 15 feet. I climb on top of the how, dragon's how corpse. How far is message? I can just send him a message. Yeah, that's fine. that sounds good. I guess you shall, right? Yeah. So then you hear Dirk's voice. Guys, it's pretty bad up here. Dirk, what's going on? Gus Gex is killing the shit out of us. Can you drop a rope down? He throws a coil of rope over the you The son whole of a thing. Bitch. I hate him so much. All right, I cast oh. Mage Hand. <laughs> pick up the rope and hand it back to him. Five finger disc. something you idiot that's gonna take like a whole combat round just do, can you dimension door people up there i used all my high level spells already uh, yeah okay that makes sense <laughs> all right he's like oh that makes sense go ahead climb up i tied it off 
Did you tie it off on something strong? Probably. I'll climb up first. I'll just walk up the wall. Those are the best boots ever. Roll a climb check. Athletics. Whatever. You know what? It makes my core strong. 15. Walking like David Bowie in Labyrinth. I got a seven. Do I have to try again? Yeah. So Sammy climbs up the rope and Grunador runs up the wall. And Flo, like, uh, just doesn't know how to climb ropes right I now. I got a six. Should I try again? I think you have to wait because we're, like, in combat oh, okay. and stuff. You get to the very top. Sammy and Grunador come over the top of the hole and they look. You see Gus Gex ram his gift gut right in the Dirk's chest. And Dirk goes, no! No! And he falls on the ground. This is bad. And I cast Rewind. <laughs> I just made that spell up. Gus Gex pulls it out. Blood shoots out of Dirk's chest oh. all over the ground. And he brings his Githka up to decapitate Dirk. Hey there, groupies. Brayton here. Thanks for listening. I hope I didn't catch you at a bad time. I'm going to make this one short. Remember to go to bardicmysterytour.com for a link to everything that we do. We really appreciate hearing from people on social media. We really, really appreciate people signing up for our Patreon. Uh, It's cool. We use that money to buy pizza and stuff, which is probably the best food you can get. I don't know. I like it with all kinds of different toppings. Ed doesn't like um, pineapples, but I do, so it's kind of like a toss-up if we get them or not. Anyway, um, remember to go there if you want to support us. And without further ado, I said, oh, wait, we should um, we should plug that now's a really good time for the Patreon because after next episode, which will be the end of Season 3, then uh, anybody who's a patron will get a download code for the new album once it gets released, which should happen pretty quickly. And you get all the behind-the-scenes stuff if you sign up at that level, which should be pretty exciting for this episode. All right, let's get back and see what happens. Shatter. All right, cast Shatter. Don't shatter Dirk. I don't know. What's the radius? Can I explode it like... It's a 10-foot radius. 10-foot above his head. I don't okay, know. You're going to drop the ceiling on us. Oh, I don't know. Is my silent servant still floating around? Yeah. Well, silent servant needs to just grab that weapon and wrench the dude right now. All right. You can issue a command to him and take an action, though. Uh, can I leap? How close are we? Uh, like 10 feet away. Well, I'll just lunge. No. No, I'll use polymorph. I'll turn him into a weak little creature. What did we turn the dragon into? A crab. A crab. A crab. Turn him into a crab. Oh, shit. I forgot something. Polymorph. Turn him into a crab. I forgot about that. The crab was good for Raduia because it was like a... Island adventure. But I don't know what else is small. I don't want, like, you turn him into the wrong thing. You <laughs> really think of one small monster. You don't want something that can finish him off. Like a chipmunk. Is there one? Yes, chipmunks exist. Then a chipmunk. As I bend you to my will, you feel the animal release. As I change your heart into that of a beast. All right, what's the saving throw? 16. Is it a constitution? It's a wisdom save. All right, he resists it. Sammy, I cast Dominate Person on him. That got him last time. What's the saving throw? It's a wisdom save against 17. And I'm going to cutting words his save. My words could horrify you. My words will bring on strife. When you said yourself against me, my words will cut like a knife. All right. What's your... What do you do? You issue a command? Yeah, I beguiled him. Now he's charmed. I want you to know he was passing out without that cutting words. Yo, see, that's why I did it. And then that was your last chance to save Dark Fidget's life. What? I tell him to attack Lady Vaya. What happens if you tell him to do something he can't do? He tries to do it. All right. He leaps from the floor that you're on up to the balcony and runs in that burgundy and gold door. 
Dirk falls from his knees onto his side. His chest is gushing blood. And he says, Sammy, it's getting darker. I run over to Dirk and I cast Cure Wounds on him. As a, I guess as a first level spell. Still talking. We got magic for ten hit points. Okay. He goes. Oh, I'm feeling a lot better. It's pretty good. I'm all right, guys. I'm still down in the basement. How's Vraxian? Vraxian is uh pretty battered and beat up, but uh he stands up off the ground and he's like, "Ah, oh, that was a close one. That Guskex, he sure is deceitful. Thought I could handle him." Vraxian, if we run back to Taverna, will we be safe there? Do you have defenses against these people? Uh, probably not. It's just like a hotel. That's what I'm worried about. And Gus Gex almost beat me by himself. Lady Vi is very powerful. Do we have to just, like, defend? I'm terrified. We're almost out of all of our resources. I think if we level up and we, we pick the right things, we can get through this. I feel like I gained some exp- XP from that, uh, that dragon. I don't know. I don't know. Should we just go and attack, or should we... I'm in the basement, guys. Okay, climb up the rope. Yeah, I'll try again. Ooh, yeah. 17 plus 2. 19. All right, you climb up the rope. Hey, guys. What are you guys talking about? Should we go try and get Lady Vaya? Ooh. Let's just go. Yo, we, we never have leveled up mid-game, though. Isn't that a cool thing? Through the hole in the roof, you see light blast in from a lightning bolt. Oh, Thunder shit. Thunder rocks the entire mansion. Yo, do we need to go beast mode and go up there? Let's go. Should we heal up quick? Yo, how many hit points do you have? 22. How many do you have? 21. <sighs> okay, we're all about the same. Yo, like Dirk, you know, any, you know any healing spells? No. Cool. Useful. Braxian's like, Dirk and I are pretty beat up. Maybe we should head back to Taverna. You guys finish off Lady Vaya and come help us out. Don't you have, like, psionic powers? Yeah, but I used them all up fighting Gus Gex. Yeah, but he's also up there. I don't think the... Well, I wrecked him pretty good. Okay, well, hopefully she's just killing him now. Yeah, that'd be nice. All right, let's leave Dirk defenseless here, and I'll go with you, and we'll try to fight Lady Vaya. Dirk can come with us also. No, he just gets stabbed by people. He'll hang in the back. Okay. Quickly, I'm going to cast Healing Word on myself. I want to make you... I want to make you feel... Wanna make you feel good? Seven. All right. Yeah. Why? Don't, that's fine. Why don't you hang with Dirk? And Dirk says that was pretty rough, guys. Maybe we can find a place in this mansion that's safe enough. We can do a little bit of a rest. Some of your uh, inspiration back. Yeah. I don't. It's, it takes an hour. Like, <laughs> Lady Fire is gonna come kill us. I think we gotta go. I think we gotta go attack her or go hide for like a long rest. Yeah. Those are our choices. I mean, I'm down to... I think she's pretty tough, right? Let's go attack her. I don't know. Like, should we see if we can make it through with a long rest? Or even a short anything? I mean, a short rest only gives us back our bardic inspiration. That's it. Well, we can spend oh. hit dice to get hit points Oh, back. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're, we're so low on HP. and she, It takes an hour. She, she, the dragon was working for her. And that dragon just whooped us. So she's got some tricks up her sleeve. It means she can hurt us, maybe. Real bad. All right, where do you think that we can rest safely? I don't know, back underneath the court, cut a hole in the dragon, climb inside. Like I don't think it's like, going to work. Like I think Luke we got to go fight her style. or we got to leave town. Let's like, hide inside of her like this is Hoth. We don't like, have a safe place Solo. to be, and the town is destroyed by her already. There's nowhere safe to go to rest. Her spawns are also out there, like literally currently oh, murdering every- Oh, you folk. mean the, the, the spawns yeah. are everywhere, so there's And no I safe. think that if we kill her, then that will put an end to her spawns. I don't know if that's true or not. Roll a history check. 30. Yes. Okay, so we just have to go straight for... Okay. Since that discussion, I'm going to uh, cast Healing Word on myself three more times. I want to make you... I want to make you feel... I want to make you feel good. Continue. We move forward. I'm trying to get this. I feel like we already lost a bunch of rounds by standing around talking. 
I want to get there while Gus Gex is still on our team. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, go. Open the door. We run. We go. All right, well, the, the stairs are destroyed right now. Remember when a huge dragon fell on the stairs and destroyed the entire floor yeah. that the stairs were attached to? Okay, I throw that rope that was tied off on something up and try to catch it on something up top. It was tied on something super precarious, by the way. It was like a like a breaking branch. Grungo, can you climb up with your boots of spidey climbing and like hold onto the rope and let us climb up? Oh, yeah. All I right. go up. All right. Grab the rope. I climb up the rope. Roll an athletics or an acrobatics check. Is that called acrobatics? Eleven. I roll up too. I got my natural 20 out of the way that I could have used to kill that jerk. All right. Now, Sammy, you got to do it again. Sammy falls down. Flo made it up. 21. Brax, he's like, I'll just hang out with Dirk. I'll make sure he's safe in case Gus Gex comes back or some of these because they're also like roaming spawns out in the yard. I don't want to leave Dirk here. He's sounds good. Can you buff us at all? No. Okay. All right. Bye. We'll see you soon. Godspeed. What did, what did the gods pee on? Every time it rains, brother. Every time it rains. So you're on the balcony. Do you want to go through that doorway she went through? Yes. All right, we try that door. All right. You walk through the door. It slams shut behind you. And you find yourselves in a 10 by 10 room. It's really cramped. And there is a burgundy and gold door behind you. On your left, there's a green door. Straight in front of you is a light blue door. And the one to your right is a dark blue door. They all have slightly different, like, uh, it's like if you went to, like, a antique shop and found old doors. They're all different doors, they're, but they're easily distinguishable by their main colors. Uh, I thought these doors might represent us because green, I thought, was flow. But then the blues, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe we each should go. What, what color is your eye on, Stone? Mine is pink. Pink? That's kind of red, right? Yeah. Mine's green. What color is yours, Sammy? Ion Stone of Reserve. What color is it? Doesn't matter. There's two blues and a green that we haven't gone through. Oh. So mine doesn't really fit. Oh, well. Okay, true. Can I use my telepathic link with Gus Gex to <laughs> to defeat, to circumvent Ed's puzzle? <laughs> oh, what's it do? I'm going to look around the room see if there's any clues. It doesn't say it can respond to me. Okay. Do we hear anything? Roll a perception check. 17. 27. 18. Actually, what's important about what you hear is it sounds like there's no more outside of this room. The door doesn't seem like it's thick enough to be a super sound insulating door, but you don't even hear like the rain and the thunderstorm from outside that should be just on the other side of this door. I try to open that door again. The burgundy and gold one? Yeah. It doesn't open. Yeah. All right, let's go through the green door. Let's open it up. Is that right? We can't knock one of the doors. If it's locked, there's no keyhole or anything. We don't know if they're locked. We didn't even test them. Oh, okay. All right, you go through the green door. It slams behind you. Dang. You're in a little 10 by 10 room. On your left is a purple door. In front of you is a chartreuse door. And on your right is a blood red door that's not burgundy. What was, what was the first color? Purple. Okay, based on my map, um, first we went through the G, green door, and now if we go through the R door, maybe we'll spell Grungo. Is that good? What sure. R door? Oh, R really? for red. Oh, blood oh, red? Oh, okay. No, that's fine. Oh, it's one of these. It's a word puzzle. I don't think it's a word puzzle. Are right, you going through the blood red door? I was suggesting we go through the blood red door. I mean, vampires like, like blood. Vampires like blood. All right. True. Yeah. All right. I'm writing this down. You ready? We're going through the blood red door. All right. You go through the blood red like, door. <laughs> you might maybe just follow every red door and you'll find the vampire. It slams like. behind you. You're in a little 10 by 10 room. On your left, there's a yellow door. Straight ahead of you is another yellow door. And on your right is a pink door. Pink's that soft tissue they like to stick their teeth in. Oh. Oh, that might be a good point. It feels like that's going to be just the other side of that light blue door, you know? So let's do that and see if this is some sort of weird magical thing. Let's go through the pink door, and if there's a light blue door on our right, then it will seem normal. Okay. All right, you walk through the pink door. It slams behind you. To your left is a green door. In front of you is a light blue door. And to your right is a dark blue door. Oh, my goodness. Mm. (laughs) My map's not... 
not working very well anymore. <laughs> I don't have a map. Good. It doesn't Wait, matter. To our left is a light blue door. Green door. Can we open the doors without? Wait, to our left is a green door. What if we all go in a different Going door? Maybe it just dumps you back at the beginning every time you do it wrong. So we should go do it again. Go through the green door. Uh, the door Is the pink door behind us pink on this side? No, it's burgundy and gold. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. 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 So let's try this. Green. We go through the green door. Okay. We go through the blood red door. Okay. Everything seems normal to do those two. All right. Do you let's wanna... go straight yellow. Yeah, straight yellow. All right. You go through the yellow door straight ahead of you. The door slams behind you. You're in a little 10 by 10 room. On your left is a blue door with yellow trim. Straight ahead of you is a gray door. And on your right is a jet black door. Is it gray with an A or with an E? Better be an E. With an E. All right. That's important. I think we should try the jet black one. Vampires like darkness. Yeah. All right. You go through the jet black door. You enter a room that's 10 by 10. On your left is a green door. In front of you is a light blue door. And on the right is a dark blue door. All right. right. Green door. Okay. Blood red door. Okay. Yellow door straight ahead. Okay. Gray door. You go through the gray door. The slams behind you. On your left is a lavender door. In front of you is a peach door. And on your right is a lime green door. I think we should go through the lime green. We started with green. Lime green? What was, the, what was to the left? Lavender. Do you guys okay if I go through lime green? Go through lime green. Okay, lime green. You go through the lime wait, green door. Wait. It okay. slams behind you. On your left is a green door. <laughs> In front of you is a light blue door. And to your right is a dark blue door. All right. Green door. Blood red door. Straight ahead yellow door. Gray door with an E. Okay. To your left is a lavender door. In front of you is a peach door. And to your right is a lime green door. She likes to eat blood and bones. No, not bones, just blood. Our one vampire was chopping up the bones. I'm trying to look for a pattern, like a puzzle to solve so that we don't have to keep guessing because it seems like there might be a lot of steps to just guess everyone. I'm going to draw. I'm drawing like a grid, I guess. Is this does it does it seem we have like a grid of rooms, it seems here. I, we keep going up in this like same straightaway. So what if we go straight again? Peach. All right, Peach, you go through the Peach door. It slams behind you. You find yourself in a small 10 by 10 room. To your left is an alabaster door. Straight ahead of you is a bare, unpainted wooden door. To your right is an orange door. Um, I think we should go through the bear door. Yeah. And hopefully there's like a bear on the other side. Roar. Bear door. All right. You go through the door. door. It slams behind you. You're in a 10 by 10 room. On your left is a green door. In front of you (laughs) is a light blue door. And to your right is a dark blue door. All right. Green. Blood red. Straight away yellow. Gray. Peach. Alabaster. All right. Alabaster. You go through the alabaster door. It slams behind you. You're in a 10 by 10 room. On your left is a green door. (laughs) In front of you is a light blue door. And to your right is a dark blue door. Let's just check out the dark blue door real quick. Okay. You go through the dark blue door. It slams behind you. On your left is a green door. Okay. In front of you is a light blue door. (laughs) And on your right is a dark blue door. All right. Green. Blood red. Straight away yellow. Gray. Peach. Orange. Plain. No, no. Orange. Yeah. I mean, do you remember that, like, I mean, there's obviously, like, some kind of magic at play here, right? So, what if it's like the Legend of Zelda, where you come to the woods, and you gotta keep going in the, through the same direction? So maybe you just gotta go through, like, the blood red door a bunch of times and see what happens. I feel like that's kind of what we're doing, exactly. Like, maybe just, but maybe there's a pattern, you have to go through the doors in, like, a certain order, like... Like red, red, black, red, or something like that. I feel like that's exactly what we're doing. Right yeah. Now. We're systematically deciding which ones to go through and which ones to. We're th- going through doors until we get a new room that's not the first room. You go through the orange door, it slams behind you and vanishes. 
You find yourself in what feels like an entire void. You see oh, stars in the distance. You don't even seem to be standing on anything. You seem to be floating in space, but still there's gravity, and you're pulled down, but you're standing on something. But it doesn't seem like it's there. Is it hard or squishy? Hard. Does it have a smell? No. Mm. Is you there see, noise? Can we make noises? You see in front of you, Lady Vaya standing there, pulling the arms off a of Gus Gex, uh. slurping out some of the bits out of him. Ew. She's like, what a failure of a pupil to be able to be influenced so easily. He had to die because of his weakness. Oh, he was our favorite. And now you too, Antler Mayhem, will die. Has Antler Mayhem lost their way in space-time? Will Lady Vaya kill the heroes of the story in a gruesome massacre? Are Dirk and Varaxian being eaten by vampire spawns as we speak? Find out next time on Bardic Mystery Tour. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Bardic Mystery Tour is recorded at Looking for Group Pittsburgh. Looking for Group Pittsburgh is a land center in the Brookline neighborhood of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. If you're in the area, stop by for games, co-working, or events. Find more information or schedule your next party at lfgpgh.com.